good morning class 12 so in the previous lecture we had uh, discussed about green revolution and its impacts so basically what we understood is that green revolution as an agricultural method brought more ecological disadvantages than it brought advantages so taking into consideration the environmental damage that occurred right uh, once again the world started thinking of a new agricultural method and that came uh, by adopting uh, we can see the old method of agriculture that we were practicing in the pre-colonial time that is sustainable agriculture so today the entire world has once again gone into the older method of agriculture with many new scientific uh, discoveries and that agriculture is sustainable agriculture. So what, uh, what do we mean by sustainable agriculture? It means an agricultural system that does not degrade the quality of the environment, right? Uh, so the Food and uh, Agricultural Organization uh, they define sustainable agriculture as that kind of agriculture which tries to limit the use of fertilizers and pesticides. Please remember it is limiting the use of fertilizer and pesticides. We cannot stop the use of chemicals, right? So when we limit and we try to depend more on natural commodities, that agricultural system that does not degrade the quality of the soil, it does not affect the human health, it does not contaminate the water bodies, that kind of an agricultural system is sustainable agriculture. Now this is a very important ISC question for next year, okay. So you need to know what are the elements of sustainable agriculture, what do we do? Because we don't want to lose the productivity that we had in green revolution. So does sustainable agriculture mean that we are gone to the olden days of agriculture where the production was very very low? No. Sustainable agriculture today is very very scientific. Right? So what are the elements that we are applying in sustainable agriculture so that we can continue with the productivity that we had during green revolution? So we see the board. I have written the points for you. Uh, the elements of sustainable agriculture are mixed farming, mixed cropping, intercropping, crop rotation, use of biofertilizers, use of biopesticides, and IPM, which stands for Integrated Pest Management System. So let's try to understand today about each and every point in detail, right? Mixed farming. When we say mixed farming, the two words are very confusing, mixed farming and mixed cropping. Now please listen carefully, what does it mean by mixed farming? Mixed farming is an agricultural system where a farmer can integrate two things together on his farmland. Like for example, a farmer, definitely a farmer will grow crops on his land, right? So, besides growing crops, the farmer can also keep livestock, okay? Why does he do that? So that he can increase his uh, economic uh, profitability, he can increase his profit level. So, the farmer will combine two or three ingredients and then when he practices this kind of farming, it is called mixed farming. So, it is not necessarily crops with livestock. It can be crops with uh, fodder trees for the, which provides uh, food to the animals. It can be crops along with fruit trees. Anything where the economic condition of the farmer improves. So depending upon the status of the farmer, what he can invest into, the farmer chooses either livestock or fishery or poultry or fruit trees, something along with his crops. So this kind of an act, what is the advantage? Just listen to the advantages. The advantage when the farmer has two or three commodities on his agricultural land, the advantage is that one, number one, his uh, profit level increases. He can earn from his crops as well as from the livestock or poultry or the fishery that he has uh, seen, right? Then his risk 
level goes down. The risk goes down, meaning we all know about the environmental conditions nowadays. If the crop fails for some reason, you have heard of the crops failing, right? If the crops fail for some reason, the farmer does not suffer a complete loss. He can still depend on his farm animals or the other things that he has kept for his source of income, right? Uh, so his uh, income maximizes, his risk minimizes, and imagine if he has maintained livestock along with his crops, then what happens is uh, there is an exchange of material. Like suppose he has kept livestock, the dump of the animals can be used as excellent source of manure for the crop land. So he does not need to use artificial fertilizers, right? And then when he has the crops, the dried crop parts, which are not required for human consumption, that can be given to the animals as fodder. So this is called exchange of material. So the environment becomes more stable with the use of natural commodities, right? So this is about mixed farming. The second topic is what we do in sustainable agriculture is farmers practice mixed Cropping, please do not get confused with the two terms. Farming is integrating live, uh, livestock with crops, but when we say mixed cropping, it means the farmer, instead of growing just one crop on his farmland, he chooses to grow two or three crops together. Now, what is the advantage if the farmer chooses to grow two or three crops? He cannot randomly choose any crop that he wants to and mix it and grow it. No. When we say mixed cropping, what does it mean? When we say the farmer has, let's take an example of the farmer has taken two crops, right? The farmer has to remember that the two crops should be of two completely opposite characteristics. What do we mean by that? Let's take a simple example. Uh, say we talk about the roots of the plant. If one of the crops has shallow roots, the other crop should have should be deep rooted. Now, by this, if the first crop has shallow roots, it takes the nutrients from the upper layers of the soil, and if the other crop is deep rooted, it will get its nutrition from the deeper parts of the soil. So, what is the advantage? Both the crops have got nutrition. Imagine if both were shallow rooted, then what would have happened is there would have been competition among the crops for nutrition from the same level. And what would have happened in the process is the stronger plant would have survived and the weaker one will die. So what a farmer does in mixed cropping to make the two or three crops survive is he will choose opposite characteristics. If one requires more water, the other should be a plant which is resistant to drought. Even in scarcity of water, the plant should be able to grow. If one has a small canopy, the other one should have a bigger canopy to shape the plant so that evaporation does not occur. So these kind of opposite characteristics when we choose and the farmer ultimately what happens is all his crops will survive because there will be no competition. This kind of agricultural practice is called mixed cropping, right? So definitely again uh, to understand the advantage of the system, uh, the farmer's income uh, maximizes because he, has, he doesn't have one, he has many crops on his land. And the second uh, advantage is that again he has uh, reduced his risk. In case one of the crops fail, he still has the other crops to depend upon, right? So this is the second element of sustainable agriculture. Then we have intercropping which we have discussed in the previous chapters also. What do we understand by intercropping? is uh, just simple, the land is divided into rows. You have, you don't plant the, the suit or the seeds wherever you want to, but the farmer divides the land into rows, in different rows. And then what he does in intercropping is, first row he grows one crop, second row he grows another crop, third row he repeats the first crop, fourth row he repeats the second crop. Now what is, why do we do this? Intercropping. Now, number one advantage of this system is that because you have one crop and then you have the next crop, the chances of pest infestation is very, very low. That means your plant will not get easily attacked by pests, right? 
then the second uh, advantage is that because we have created a rose, it is very easy to irrigate, to provide water. It is very easy to provide fertilizers and pesticides to the plant. It is very easy to harvest the crops. So this uh, agricultural system is called intercropping, right? Uh, then the next one, all of you are very familiar with this uh, particular uh, topic, crop rotation. All of us know this. This is the best method of sustainable agriculture where every season the farmer changes his crops. If he has grown maize in the first season, he will not grow maize in the next season. Why? Because if you grow the same plant again and again, that is monocropping, what happens is the pest which is there in the soil, they become resistant. Even if you apply medicine, the pests are not going to die. Right? So it's very important that we change the crop every season. So advantages of crop rotation class. Uh, advantage of crop rotation, when you change the crop every season, what happens? You do not have to apply pesticides. Automatically the pest which is there in the soil, as you all know, we must be knowing, that one particular pest insect is dependent on one particular plant for its nutrition. So, when we change the crop, what happens? That particular pest does not get its nutrition because the plant has been changed. So, what happens to this pest? Not getting nutrition, it slowly dies, right? So, we get rid of pest and because different plants have different nutrient requirements, the soil does not lose its fertility when we keep changing the crop. And also to remember an examination question for crop rotation is uh, <clears throat> once uh, in, during the change, the farmer needs to grow leguminous crops, false family plant. So once in two years or three years, the farmer should go grow leguminous crops. Why he should do this is because leguminous plants have rhizobium bacteria and that rhizobium bacteria, it fixes nitrogen into the soil and it makes the soil very, very fertile, right? So that is regarding crop rotation. Then number five and number six, we have uh, use of biofertilizers and use of biopesticides, right? So biofertilizer, we all in the previous class, I told you, when we use chemical fertilizer, eutrophication occurs. So now we are trying to move to biofertilizers, something which is very, very safe for the environment. So what acts as biofertilizer? Just now I told you, rhizobium bacteria, azotobacter, acetobacter, azola, all these organisms naturally make the soil very, very fertile. So that is what we are trying to do in sustainable agriculture. We are trying to use bio-fertilizers. Then I told you, if you remember, pesticides. If you use DDT, if you use other chemical pesticides, it causes bio-magnification in nature. Very, very dangerous. So we are trying to stop the use of pesticide and we are trying to adopt bio-pesticide. Now what are bio-pesticides? natural pesticides that in no way harm the plant, they don't harm the soil, they are not toxic and they do not cause bio magnification. Hey, do you have a new plant? Bio neem is there, neem oil is there, sometimes onions also because of the pungent smell, they repel the insects out of the agricultural land. Then we have pyrethrin which is made from chrysanthemum flower. The extract of chrysanthemum flower, that is called pyrethrin, that if it is sprayed on the agricultural land, all the pests die, right? So we have neem oil, we have bione, we have pyrethrin, we have onions, we have basil leaves. All these act as wood ash. All these, they kill the soft-bodied insect and the plant. So our mission is complete. We want to get rid of the pest. So we are trying to avoid the use of chemicals. And the last topic class is IPM, that is Integrated Pest Management System. What is a farmer doing today? Since we cannot use chemical pesticides 
we have adopted a system of IPM. IPM integrated, combined, a combined approach. How we can get rid of pest from the land without the use of chemical pesticide. So can you tell me from more that we learned today? I have already taught you many methods how we can get rid of pest from the land without pesticide. Like number one, what is IPM approach? Crop rotation. If you just change the crop every season, you have got rid of pest. So that becomes one IPM approach. You can use bio pesticides. Okay, if you use neem oil bioneem, you get rid of pest, right? Number three would be the use of predators of the pest. Predators means what? You can attract frogs and sparrows to the agricultural land. And what will the frogs and sparrows do in the agricultural land? They will not destroy your crop, but they will all feed on the pest and you get rid of pest. That is called biological control. Then the farmers are using genetically modified crops. What are genetically modified crops? These crops are made in such a way that even if you have lots of pests in agricultural land, your plant does not get affected because it has been made new to the pest. That is genetically modified crops. So what did I tell you regarding IPM? How do we get rid of pests without pesticides? Crop rotation, you can have, you can use biopesticides, you can have biological control, you can have genetically modified plants. If all these approaches are combined on the agricultural land, a farmer does not have to use pesticide, right? So this is about sustainable agriculture. Now we are left with the last topic of the chapter that is food security. What is important from IEC point of view, I will be discussing in the next class and then we will move over with the chapter and then we will start section C.